Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have some fun. Well, good morning. Nick Collier here, and, uh, and today we're going to kind of take a little bit different tact. Uh, this is a project that I'm working on, and I've been meaning to do this for, oh, I don't know, I can't tell you how long, a year or so. Uh, I went to a steel yard, a used steel yard, which I love used steel yards, the other day, at, or not the other day, it was probably about two years ago, and picked up this piece of steel, and it was like, oh, this is going to be a perfect piece, and it was cheap, and I went, I'll take it, and, uh, you know, it's totally out of, out of square, it's a piece of junk, really, but you know, with a little bit of effort, we can put it together. Now, what happened was, um, oh, for the last uh, five or six years, I've been selling these little mini wood stoves for tiny houses and trailers and stuff like that. And uh, I'll show you a picture. And uh, so, uh, you know, and just this last winter, the sales started picking up and I was kind of happy about that. I was like, okay, cool. So I I kind of put together a little assembly line and built a, a bunch of them. And about two weeks ago, out of the blue, uh, EPA gives me a call and says, well, you can't make these stoves anymore. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And they said, well, it has to be approved and it has to, you know, have uh, all the seals of approval. And I said, well, okay, I, I'd like to do that. Uh, what's it going to cost? Oh, about 20 grand. And it's like, uh, yeah, 20 grand? I mean, I, you know, I don't sell that many stoves to be able to, to uh, in, um, you know, spend 20 grand. So um, basically, I had to stop making the stoves. So, I'm, you know, I'm thinking, and this didn't happen the other, this just happened a month or two ago, and then for this whole time I've been thinking, all right, what, what can I make that's going to sell that I don't have to have EPA's approval? And uh, um, my wife keeps, has been harping on me for, oh, I, I don't know how long, a couple of years, to make her some gongs. And... Uh, and all of a sudden it came to me, well, wait a second, a gong isn't a bad idea. Um, and uh, they seem to sell for a fair amount of money. And uh, hey, why not give it a try? So what I'm going to do, and, and I'm going to apply the, uh, the hydraulic press that I built, oh, I don't know, six months ago or so. I'm going to apply that to this gong making uh, enterprise that I'm going for. And right now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece of steel. And this has been, you know, since I've had this piece of steel, this is what I've wanted to do with it. And we're going to flatten the surface, and then we're going to concave that surface and get, oh, I don't know, what does it look like, about a 10 or 12 inch radius in that circuit, surface to be able to shape the gong and kind of give it a dish, dish shape to it. So, uh, and it turns out, <laughs> I thought I was buying a piece of steel. Well, that's okay. I'm thinking, you know, I bought three or four of these pieces, different sizes and stuff. And the two that I've already machined are cast iron, which isn't a bad thing, especially for this kind of application. Cast iron is probably a better thing, uh, but it's a mess. So, uh, we're probably going to be cutting cast iron today, and uh, hey, stick with me. We're going to have some fun. All right, let's see what kind of material we're working with here. And I'm going to put a towel down just in case it's uh, cast iron.
All right. I mean, what do, what do we got? We're out by a good half inch. Well, maybe it's not cast iron. My bit must be dying here because uh, it's not acting well. So we're going to change uh, in, uh, inserts and see what we can come up with. All right. Well, we've been at this for about an hour, and we finally broke into broke through into clean metal. There's a little bit left over from right there, but I'm going to take a final cut, and I think I'll pull that out when I, when I take that cut. So, just a kind of a clean-up cut. Now, I didn't do the interior here because we're going to make a cup out of the interior, so all of this is going to go away anyhow. So, I think we're going to do a, a clean-up cut and then come back and, and catch the uh, outer surface.
right, so now we're going to just knock off that edge so nobody gets cut and we'll be set to go. Get rid of some of this trash. Oh my god, it's all wrapped up. This is some stout stuff, boy. It does not break. So I'm guessing there's a bunch of nickel in here or something that's got a, such a beautiful uh, sheen to it when it cuts. So we're going to come in here. I think I'm going to put some gloves on. Because that stuff isn't giving up. Warm but not hot. All right, let's back this up. Let's get ourselves a piece of wood in here so that it has something to drop onto. Loosen our jaws and flip this thing around. And it doesn't really matter that much, but I want to bring this thing in pretty pretty tight to center. So we're going to just kind of fake it for a little bit and then get some... Get an indicator on it. There we go. Okay. So I'm seeing a bit of a gap back here. That looks pretty good.
All right, so. All right, looks good. So we're ready to go here. Uh, we're going to cut this first because we're all set up to go there. Then we'll face that off. Then we'll flip it back over and do the other part. All right, so we need to figure out how much of a cup we can uh, we can make in our in our disc. So what I've done is I've taken measurements, and it's uh, the the width of the steel is 10 inches. So I've got two little 10 inch marks there, and there's the five inch center. So we're going to take that, and we're going to square up to this piece of steel. And we're going to come out here and strike a line. And then we're going to take my small compass and we're going to answer that phone. Well, that was my artist buddy and she's up in Ashland, Oregon. And uh, we're uh, in the process of bidding this uh, 100 and some odd thousand dollar job up in Ashland doing a sculpture for a uh, for the city of Ashland and so we kind of bounce back and forth a bunch you know this whole project's going to take place in 2018 which is a couple years out of the, out but still hey let's work it so let's get back to this piece here and uh, and uh, let's see, what were we doing we're going at 10 inches which is that line and that line and then of course I want to have about a half an inch um, uh, you know, border so that it has something to sit on, and then we want to be a quarter inch from the from the bottom, and the, and our piece is an inch and a half thick. So we take my little mini uh, compass and uh, set it up someplace on this line. Oops, bring it down. Now that's going to hit the quarter inch right there, and this is going to come out to, that's 10 inches there, so that's too far. So we want to come in just a little bit, and that's going to miss the quarter inch, so they're going, we're going to bring our distance in. There it is, and that's a little wide. I mean, I'm sure there's a mathematical way of figuring this out, but you know, that's not my strong point. I like to do it mechanically. Just a little bit more. All right, I think we did it. And that swings over to here, and it's too wide over here. Now, why is it too wide over there? Oh, it's too wide everywhere. All right, so let's bring it further in. And too tall. Get it right on the center line.
Getting close. That looks like about it. That's going to be a little bit thick here. Yeah, let's bring it down. Very close. Pretty good, pretty good. It's going to be there. It's a little wide over here. And a little wide there. Alright, we're going to just really goose it in here. Hits the quarter. Comes over, hits that one. All right, let's just strike a line and see what we've got. And that looks pretty good. It's a little off over here, but, for, you know, for some reason it is. All right, so we're going to make our mark on the center point. Put the cap back on the pen. And there's our mark. And measure it. And it measures. Nine and one eighth inch. All right, so that's our arc. Let's go over and see what we can do with that. Okay, so we're going to turn this thing around again. Let's get some support under there. We're going to try to use, can you see that? Let's make sure you can. Yeah, let's get in a little closer. And I don't know if it's going to work or not. It has worked on, on my little lathe when I tried to do it. Oh, hell, it must have been 20 years ago. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a bit at the point of, at the center of the, uh, hang on a second. At the center of our compound. And that is going to give us, and I'm seeing center to be about, about there. And we're looking for nine and a quarter inches. No, nine and an eighth. So from there, there's nine and an eighth right there. So we need to just basically get a bit out to that point. And I'm not sure you can see it. Oh, you heard I can turn this. So there's nine and an eighth approximately. So if we can get a bit out to here, we'll have that nine and an eighth radius. And I could just basically use this as my cutter, which will be really easy. At least an easy setup. So first thing we want to do is come in and make sure that uh, that I'm zeroed out here, just because I'm gonna at least be close to zero. So we're gonna come in and put an indicator on that. And give it a spin. Oh, I'd say we're out about there's our high. So a 
you're out about 20. So we're out about eight now. Yeah, we might be able to just tighten this up a bit more. Now about four. I want to make sure that we're squared up in our. Yep, we are. Okay. So we'll back this up just a little bit. All right, one and a half. I can live with that. All right, so I realized that we're probably going to use a high-speed bit <coughs> on my uh, uh, here on the tool post. So uh, I'm and uh, this rough stuff is going to just chew a high-speed bit to bits. So I think what we're going to do is go ahead and switch out and come up with a um, an insert that will get through that that rusted you know crapola stuff <coughs> so we're gonna go ahead and do that
right, that time we did it. Now, I'm going to loosen this up, turn off our fan, and we know that our center point is someplace right in here. And I think what I want to do is actually get that center point figured out. Well, wait, first thing, let's just see if we can get in far enough that the center point is going to be relevant. Just barely. Nope, in fact, we didn't make it. Shoot. That's as far as it goes, right there. And we're, oh, a good inch away from center. So, is there a way of doing it? Hmm. Well, one thing I know for sure is we can hog out a bunch of this stuff using this method. And, uh, and I think that's going to be a good thing. So let's just see how it goes. Let's try another bit, just to see if it might make a difference. Of course, it's a lot closer, but that's okay. We can just uh, adapt to that. Oh, this is as far in as it goes. Yeah, okay. Come out, come out. There we go. Okay, well, you're not going to believe what I had to go through to uh, get this thing. I mean, because it was one inch short of the center being center. And uh, so literally I had to take apart the entire uh, worm drive for the, um, for the carry or for the cross feed. And so that I can actually slide it now to where I need it. And then once I get it centered on this on this block then we can kind of come in and do the uh, and I don't know can you see that probably no in fact you can't let's see if we can back you up a little bit uh, no, there we go then we can come in and do an accurate uh, arch here <laughs> 